The Radio Waymo Breakfast. And now let's steer into the night sky with uh, Dylan Story. Thanks very much to the Auckland Stardome Observatory. Hey there, Dylan. Good morning. Good morning. Now, a lot of talk on the internet yesterday, news sites, um, about um, some solar flares. The, the sun had given a, an enormous belch, and it made for some pretty impressive um, uh, yeah, photography of, of, of the sun with this enormous solar flare popping out. But then, of course, all that radiation has to reach the Earth, and that was expected to happen sort of uh, last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, New Zealand time, in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, much action at all? Um, not that I can find out. I mean, I haven't haven't seen anything on the news about it taking out any um, satellites or communications. But um, yeah, it would. So the radiation from it would reach us within eight minutes. That's how we know. That's how we can see that it's there. What we're waiting for to arrive is this sort of um, a, a wave of charged particles, if you like. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're the things that come in and they'll interact with our atmosphere and because they're, sort of, they're electric, they'll interfere with the electrics of our atmosphere. That's what causes the auroras at the poles. Um, so if you're near the north or south pole or anywhere sort of within within range of them, you've got a good chance of seeing auroras there was, um, caused there w- by the solar flare. Right, there was some expectation that... Uh, communications and electricity grids could be disrupted, but that obviously that didn't happen. Well, when you get a really massive solar flare and you get a, a huge group of charged particles coming to the Earth, yeah, the, the, the interaction it has with the electrics of the atmosphere can cause disruption to some of the satellites, some signals in between. It's happened in the past. Um, but as solar flares go, this one's not actually a particularly big one. Right. The thing that's, the thing that's sort of particularly notable about this one is that it's been captured by three different space observatories all up there to um, study the sun. So we've got the SOHO Observatory, which has been up there for ages. We've got the Solar Dynamic Observatory, which is there to... Um, they're all there to observe the sun. And the Stereo, which has got two different craft which look at the sun in stereo, so you get a, you get some depth perspective on these things. So um, it's been captured in great detail by all these cameras, and it's what's really remarkable about it is these sort of um, composite images or videos that have been put together of a solar flare. So... Mm. Um, you can see them on the net. Cool. I'll, actually, I'll post I'll post a link to a cool one on Twitter. Okay. And um, it's really amazing. You see this this massive spurt of flame coming off the sun. Uh, so that kind of that kind of sparks a bit of additional fear, I guess, because of the way these composite images are put together. It it literally looks like there's this massive wall of flame coming out that's going to hit the earth. Yeah. And in some in some ways that's true, but what you've got to remember is that the the images that they put together are blocking out the sun. So the sun, sun's light, the sun itself is putting out orders of magnitude more light than things around it. So that's why it's only recently that we've been able to observe these flares so well because it's this technology of blocking out the main light from the sun so that you can see what's around it, which is literally millions of times fainter. Mm. So then what they do is they, they put a filtered image of the sun together with the... Um, magnified image of what's around it and put it together so they appear the same brightness whereas in in reality to the human eye the solar flares are, are so dim compared to the, the sun itself that you you wouldn't be able to see them so they they kind of huh. give this disproportionate sense of the power of the, the solar flare yeah because it i mean it, but in saying that though even though faint to the human eye and everything these these flares as as they come out of the sun they're they're enormous, aren't they? I mean, the, I mean, the scale of the sun is just so huge. I mean, they're, they're, they're far bigger than the Earth, right? They're huge, yeah. Well, well, if you see them um, with the Earth up next to it, Earth is just a tiny dot swamped by this huge, huge wave of flame. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and the, and they are they are certainly very powerful. Yeah. Just just not as powerful as the the images sort of make them out to be. And I I can recommend um if I mean if you want to. You know, if you want to get a little bit geeky on this stuff, there's there's an app on Android called um, Aurora Buddy uh, that basically has an alert system um, for um, solar flares and will tell you. Um, this is great for the northern hemisphere, really. Um, but I, I, I don't know why I have it. I live in the southern hemisphere, but for some reason I have it. Um, it, it will tell you um, how how major a um, the, you know how bright the aurora is going to be, basically. And at the moment, it says low. Yesterday, it said medium. Um, 
Oh, really? Be interested to see what, what um, a, a high looks. What's that called again? Uh, Aurora Buddy. It will it'll alert you as Aurora. well. You can set the alert. Say um, you want to you want to be alerted if the, the they measure it in kps. By the way, I don't know what kp is, but if it's a above five kp, then you can be alerted. Or if you want it to be sort of ten kp oh, yeah, or you whatever, can, you can yeah. set your alert threshold. Yeah, basically. That's so, pretty awesome. I mean, uh, apparently some of the um, astronomers at the Stardome reckon they have seen an aurora from Auckland. Yeah. Uh, um, in the past, that was at the last solar maximum, which is but um, solar maximum is going to happen again at two two thousand and thirteen. So we're kind of getting into the really active sun period. So it's a good time for aurora okay. spotting. Cool. All right. Check um, it out. If they, they, um, the telescope operator there. Kevin has got um, got some pretty flash iPhone apps. I think he's got something similar to it for iPhone. Yeah, yeah, there would be. Um, let's let's move on uh, to something that we can see definitely. Uh, Matariki. It's about Matariki time, isn't it? Yeah. When you say can see, um, pretty unlikely to see it from Auckland at this time of month. I mean, um, in the past, it has been the the first sighting of Matariki in the morning sky before the. Sun comes up to block it out was uh, is what um, first part of what signals the Maori New Year. The other part is the, the phase of the moon. Yeah. Um, but those are in the days before city lights and air pollution and everything, where you get perfectly pristine, clear skies and you could see this star cluster seen there faintly in the morning sky. Now, from Auckland, it'll be very difficult to see until it, it'll get easier as time goes past, as time goes by, sort of. Towards the end of the month, you'll be able to see it, mm. definitely, and for the rest of the year. But um, yeah, it is that um, it is that morning sighting which marks annular time, marks Earth's path around the sun when Earth is sufficiently past the sun so that this um, distant cluster can be seen again. And um, and of course, um, there's plenty of celebrations around the country for that as well. Um, fi- There's all sorts. It's getting bigger and bigger, yeah. Yeah. Finally, Dylan, um, conspiracy theorists say that there was a comet heading towards Earth about to wipe us out. Uh, tell us about this. Yeah, I just got this press release from NASA, actually. I think it must have been a, a an American thing, but um, yeah, apparently a lot of websites are saying there's, there's this comet, comet Elenin has been discovered by a, a Russian... Um, astronomer a couple of months ago and a lot of people were saying or conspiracy sites were saying it's going to hit us but um its trajectory has been calculated and it's not going to hit us luckily comet Helen is a short period comet which means it's it's been around the sun before it's not on its first cycle in from the outsides of the solar system it's um it's been around before so it's kind of established an orbital resonance with earth and um it's not going to hit us, basically. It's going to cross our path, for yeah. sure. Phew. But, um, Phew. It's but it's probably not even going to become brighter in the sky. Right, okay. And when you say it's going to pass near us, what, we're talking millions of kilometres? Millions, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is, you know, close in astronomy terms. Yeah, true, true. All right, well, for more planetary goodness, make sure you head along to the Auckland Stardome Observatory and uh, follow yes, yeah follow Dylan on Twitter as well Twitter Twitter dot com forward slash Dylan Story. Um, time now here on Kiwi is twenty eight minutes past eight. Um, no no 